Can I tell you a story? Go ahead. My sneaky link broke up with me. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why I'm laughing. It's funny. It's funny as shit, but I'm a little bit mad about it. My sneaky link why? broke up with me. Is he just swallowing the gum? I'm not swallowing the gum. Because it's going to stick to it. You, you remember how when we were kids, like, we had this, um, like, different analogies. Yeah. If you swallow um, orange seeds. Yeah, orange. I mean, I don't mind. <laughs> it's so early in the morning, Austin. <laughs> not that I didn't just come from swallowing gum. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Come on. Yeah, right. I no really wonder am. she was glowing. It's not the good quality makeup. Bullshit. Wow. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> back to what we were swallowing when we were kids. <laughs> oh, they finally see you on the pod. Ooh. Well, a quick glance. Thank you, sweetie. So yeah, I remember those analogies. Spit. Is that how you spit? <laughs> we never spit. We only swallow. <laughs> so how we used to have those analogies. That remind me that's there. That if you swallow like orange seeds mm. or um, an orange will grow in your st- watermelon. Watermelon. Yeah. Like the it will grow from your stomach and come up and like just sprout out of your Let me just name pick this one. Don't cut it. It's fine. Hello. Okay. Don't introduce the body. Potato <laughs> the best time. <laughs> Ati miata to plus yanini? Oh, sawa, nakutumia miatatu. Thank you. Okay, we can continue. That's my delivery. I'm getting a top because I have weddings to attend. Oh. Has the issue, bro? Why are people getting married left, right, and center? Also, you've been on your Indian tip lately. See, it's because I have so many Indian functions going on. I love it. I love the outfits. You I like do? the looks. Yeah, oh, they look you. really good. I'm going to post another one tomorrow. They look really good. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, do the intro. Welcome back <laughs> to another episode of The Double Sided Tay. I think this is episode 39. With myself, Ashley. I'm Nimra, and wow. I'm trying to send this guy delivery money. Also, why is delivery <clears throat> so expensive these days? Yo, fuel is going up. It's a I hot know. mess. I it's an actual hot mess. Like, I used to pay two sock from CBD to to lion place now i'm paying like 350 bro yep yeah it's, it's bad mm. yo let me tell you the cost of living is only getting worse yeah worse but you know what usually um makes me laugh and laugh cry is how the politicians literally find any excuse to say prices of things are gonna go up oh yeah like recently like two or three of them i'm not gonna name them they actually said that oh fuel and things gonna get expensive because israel and palestine are at at each other and i'm like how but i remember those some time back correct me from don't don't come after me if i'm wrong excuse me when the, the, those mention of um fuel is gonna go up after every month or so am yeah. i wrong about that yeah there was yeah there was mention of that so i'm not even shocked but like even when the fuel was going up a friend of mine told me did we talk about this already no yeah a friend of mine was this like he sent me um the information and i was just like ah uh, okay and my fuel my, my car was going on e right mm-hmm. i was like ah uh, okay i'll go fuel later mm-hmm. like three hours later on all the news it's like breaking news yeah. fuel has gone up by i don't even remember how much i was just like but then sometimes i'm thinking about it if the fuel prices are gonna keep going up and every time they want to announce <clears throat> in the night before people wake up full tank in the long run like is it worth it you know, you like giving I mean? us a heads up, like giving us a heads up and people go and rush and flood petrol stations and fuel their cars once. But then you'll still have to fuel a car two weeks later. Either way, true. But for, OK, how I look at it is mm-hmm. it's not even the government who's telling, giving us information. It's not the not media true. houses who are getting the lily no. of it. So that's when they tell you, OK, yeah. there might be an increase of fuel, blah, blah. Then later on, they're just like, yep, we told you, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Then you still run. And My question <sighs> is, if the global crude oil prices are dipping, why are we still being charged so much for fuel? Plus, I just realized when you look at the amount that fuel we're buying fuel for it's actually not that expensive a lot of the money that we're paying for fuel are a crazy amount of levies and taxes yeah, yeah, no, no, like the sure. vat on fuel is so high but yet i mean i understand when the global oil prices were skyrocketing mm, it, made, it sense. made sense but now the oil prices are dipping and we're still paying so much more for fuel i don't get it 
Anyway, I'm going to start walking. Just kidding. I've no, listen. This test. I dusted <laughs> off my little bike that I stopped. The bicycle. Yeah. <laughs> dusted off my little bicycle. I'm still scared of just riding it, of course. I'm not scared of riding other things. But, oh, um, we know. You know, so mm. I dusted it off and all. I was just like, I'm going to ride you. <laughs> but I think you should you should maybe be become a biker chick. Because I think a boda is still a bit safer to ride yeah, than a bicycle. And I feel like I'd look really nice You'd on it. You'd look hot. Oh, thank you. Mm. Thank the, you. The, the, the leather thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah, helmet. Yeah. No, but I'd sweat the shit. I already sweat so much. I'd be burning up but in that shit. But it still look nice with the helmet. Fact. <laughs> it's the helmet that matters, right? Right? Yep. But I actually know how to ride bikes. Yeah. Yeah. I also do, but I'm too scared. <clears throat> Not in Nairobi. Oh, yeah, that's the thing. Hey, See? these so, highways, bro. Even for me with my little bicycle, right? Yeah. I feel like it will be the safest thing to ride. But then like the buses <laughs> <Is it>? and the, <laughs> we've had this discussion. So uh, the only reason I'm scared of riding it is because I don't know what the other crazies are going to do to me. Yeah. Or if they're going to like, if, if. And then Venant kind of scared me. He was just like, when you're riding, also be very scared of those. Do you pull wind? What is it called? Something. Um, and a backwind. Um, backwind. Backwind. From uh, trailers. Yeah, from trailers or from like big trucks and shit like that. I'm just like, oh, it's okay. As long as they're pushing me away. He's like, no, no, no. They don't push you away. Mm. They pull you in. in yeah. I said what? <laughs> it's because there are no bicycle lanes in Nairobi. Like yeah. if this city just had a good urban planning, we would have been so much better, even with traffic. Because if you have a lane for cyclists, you have a lane for bodas, and then a lane for people who are walking, yeah. and everyone maintain their own lanes. Yeah. See, life could have been so much better. Yeah, true. I mean, the Matachas will find a way to make it their lane, I right? Mean. <laughs> um, which is, I mean, it, it wouldn't really work. But I see, I see so many white people cycling. And I'm like, white people ain't scared of you shit. Have, white people jump from buildings, fam. Bro, you have the balls of steel. Yeah, white people. Have you not seen those guys, those white um, TikTokers who come down to Kenya and then just go to, there's a concert, there's a popular guy, I can't remember his name. He goes into town and uses his phone to record and shows people how he ain't being robbed. I'm like, bitch, it's cause you're white. Wow. <laughs> like, cause you know, they, sometimes they don't fuck around with white people like that. Because really? They, yeah, cause you know, they know that a lot of these people who come down, they have backup from the embassy. Mm, the experts. The yeah. experts and stuff like that. So they're like, oh, if the US embassy he said my person got robbed it's over for kenya so they don't fuck around with white people i feel like it's also the audacity they have the audacity goes a very long way you know if you walk around with confidence nobody's gonna ask you shit you know uh i, I feel so i feel like if i walk around town with my phone up and i'm just like yeah try me you know uh -uh. <laughs> i'd be Kwan instantly robbed Kwan <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> yeah, I love how Austin's looking at you and she just smiled. Yeah, exactly. Hi, Austin. You haven't talked to us today. Hey, what's up? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Um, Team Kubwa. Ish. Yeah. Bad transition. Bad transition. Okay, I have one. Um, you know how sometimes there's some feelings that you only experience for the first time? Yeah. Like there's always that, like <clears throat> this is what I love about children is like the first time they open their eyes the first time they discover something it's such a great feeling yeah so like do you remember the feeling you felt when the first time you tasted candy or like the first time you saw your favorite celebrity Damn. like your first times because like for me um i do remember the first time I tasted chocolate. Trust mm. me. Do you? Yes. I vividly, because I'm addicted to chocolate. I yeah. love chocolate. So I remember my mom was on this uh, roll of, oh, no sugar for my children. And this is in the 90s, which mm. is quite surprising. <laughs> no. You're really showing your age here. <laughs> Sorry, go on. Yeah, so this she was like, yeah, yeah, don't, don't eat sugar. It's not good for you, whatever. Then I remember this one time um, I actually stole her chocolate. And I had to climb, you know, the kitchen counters because yeah. she used to store it up there. So I'm there putting a chair, climbing the kitchen counter. And there was this chocolate. I don't know if you remember it. It used to come for like 12 bob. It used to have nuts in it. Just a Cadbury brand as well. Anyway, when yeah. I find the name, I know you know it. Hazelnut. Mm -hmm. I, sorry? Hazelnut. I think hazel. No, no, not, not hazelnut. I'll remember it. Mm. It's one of those sister brothers of fudge and minchok. Min oof, yeah. lit. So trust me, when I tasted it, Blew, mm. blew your mind what like if feeling? i compare it with the first time i had sex and the first time wow. I, I had chocolate chocolate wow that feeling is euphoric do, I, I think i just don't feel then <laughs> what do you <laughs> mean a lot about me i don't remember any first feelings even the first time you had sex i know you like that one <laughs> i don't remember how i felt 
I mean, of course I liked it because clearly I'm still doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a good girl. Yeah. I do not fornicate. She does not engage in such things. Yeah. Um, I don't... I, <clears throat> or maybe it's because I don't necessarily pay atten- attention. Attention. Like, or I've just thrown it. Now it's going to take you some time to think about it. Okay, what's the, the first time <clears throat> you swam or you learned how to ride a bicycle? I drowned, actually, the first time. <laughs> I drowned the first time I, I think I went into a pool properly. For real? Um, then after that is when I was like, I'm going to learn how to swim. And I taught myself how to swim. So that was, that I, I, my feeling was scared. Like, <laughs> like, did you drown, drown? No, like, yeah. Like I literally went to the bottom of the, of the pool. <gasps> Who I fell saved off, you? I fell off. You know, the, the, the tires we used to use as floaters? Yeah. Yeah. So I like flipped over. Shit. Um, and I just actually are quite brave because a I lot of black sank. people wouldn't get back in that pool. Yeah, I just sank and I just sat at the bottom of the <laughs> pool. Um, then my auntie saved me, but that's a different story. Austin, first hmm. time you had sex, do you remember? How did it feel? Um, it felt like I was being electrocuted. Mm. <laughs> yeah, because it was. Because you came so hard. <laughs> I, okay, I would be revealing a lot about my sex life, but I will be Yeah, allowed. I know. Here we are. It's the double sided <laughs> tape for a reason. Yeah, triple sided tape. Right? I remember the first time I had, I got mm-hmm. my first tattoo, right? Ooh. And I feel like it's the same thing. It's like, it's a subtle, I like, hey, my smile, banana. I'm going to look fresh here. <laughs> I'm out here sending people sorry, money. Sorry, sorry. Someone's making Austin happy. <laughs> Maybe it's because you're sending him money. I no. <laughs> okay, I'll shut Omeda, up. No. Anyway, the first time I got a tattoo, I remember him. First tattoo. And then funny enough, this is the one that nobody ever sees. Um I noticed. Yeah. So the first time I got a tattoo, I remember it was like pain and then it was like was it can we call it silence? Yeah. And then like a painful silence. Yeah. And then like a beautiful pain. And sending and your tats feet. Stop it. it yeah. The phase I am in life, I'm probably just going to get my sleeve done at this rate. <laughs> oh, there was a TikTok I watched. Mm-hmm. And these guys were saying, I think they have a podcast. Um, and they were saying the, mm-hmm. the amount of piercings you have and the amount of tattoos you have mm-hmm. shows the amount of trauma you've been through. <laughs> Uh, so on the set they were just uh, like so who has the most trauma in this room and there was one guy who was sleeved up the whole and this way it's me because i've got the most tattoos in this do room you? i've got one two three four five i've got five seven you have seven <laughs> wait one two three oh you have four more. five six seven Oh, it's the titty ones that I haven't seen. Oh, yeah, properly. the one in between. Yeah. There's this one as well. That's the next one I'm getting is a sternum. Yeah, it's actually mm, not that painful. It's going to look so But anyway, nice. it doesn't shoot trauma. I just like drawing on my, no, on but my skin because I'm an therapy. artist. Tattoos are therapy. It's my, better than drinking. My mom literally, every time she's stressed, she goes and gets a tattoo. I love your mom. Yeah, she's dope. She's so cool. <laughs> what? The, <laughs> the last time she was heavily stressed, I remember this so vividly. <clears throat> There was a loss in the family and she went to the tattoo guy and she had a cat, right? Mm-hmm. So what she did, she built a castle for the cat, <laughs> like a full <laughs> castle for the cat. And I was just like, how long did that take? And she was just like, a couple of hours. I'm like, a couple of hours. hours. She was like, yeah, almost the whole day, but it felt so good. good. <laughs> yep. 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 That's, that's stress. It shows a lot of trauma, but you know what? They, they look good. But I mean, they look sexy. They look good. I, I saw this, um, like I always envisioned if I'm supposed to like see, like my ideal guy would have a lot of tattoos. <laughs> Funny enough, yeah. Come, have you ever been with men who have tattoos? No. Funny enough, not many men that I'm with have many tattoos. It's like two tattoos. Like max. you have more tats than them, yeah, right? Yeah, for yeah. sure. And then I mean, they're usually really dark because we like them nice Chocolate. and dark and handsome. All right. Yeah. Yes, Austin, <laughs> touch yourself. <laughs> touch yourself. So yeah. So majority of the time, you can't see it because you know. No. <laughs> Yummy and chocolatey. This podcast is very horny today. I don't know what's in the air. Oh, we've been hornier than this on this podcast. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> so yeah, funny enough, majority of the men that I'm, I've been with don't necessarily, are not big fans of like tattoos and shit like that. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Are we attracting opposites? Okay, if you've got tattoos, hit me up. I feel like I attract narcissists. Damn. Why are you spoken to my soul? <laughs> I didn't know I was with a narcissist until today, so. Whoops. That's what I'm saying. You, it's like you're, you're looking into my soul without looking I into really my soul. I really am. I'm yeah. just speaking to you. Mm. Can I tell you a story? Go ahead. 
my sneaky link broke up with me. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why I'm laughing. It's funny. It's funny as shit, but I'm a little bit mad about it. My sneaky link why? broke up with me. I think he caught feelings. Okay. Then it's then. <laughs> but then he threw it to me. Back at you. Yeah, he threw it back at me and he was just like, this is more than what I signed up for. And I'm just like, I was here for a fuck. Like, <laughs> like relax. Like before, I mean, I liked his company and whatnot, but sometimes it will come and we're hanging out and I'm just like, so... When are you learning? Am I getting drills today? <laughs> it's like, nah, I just want to hang out with him. I'm like, oh, cute. Okay. But I mean, either way, we're still friends, right? Yeah. I hope he doesn't watch this. Mm-hmm. If, uh, please don't cut any snippets from this, <laughs> this part. <laughs> um, so yeah, so randomly I was just like, because now we hadn't had sex for like a month or so. And I was just like, what's happening? Do you just not want to, you know, yeah. like, like fuck are, me are anymore? Done? Yeah. yeah. And he was just like, um, I think I figured out what it was. And I was just like, so what, it, what was it? Mm-hmm. Do tell. And he was just like, this is more than what I signed up for. Um, it used to be, you know, the dial a dick. And now it's not necessarily that. And, you know, blah, blah. And I was just like, yeah, I figured that was it. Because mm-hmm. um, initially we started as friends who are fucking. And now yeah. we're just like, it's kind of evolving faster. Mm. I, I literally told him, listen, we're very likable people. Yeah. You know, I mean, me personally. <laughs> <laughs> it was only inevitable that feelings will have gotten involved at the end of the day. Um, so, yeah. Are you I, secretly happy <laughs> it wasn't from your end first? Because I, I would be. So, am I secretly happy that? Like, if, if I was having a situation ship and he caught feelings before me, I would be happy. Yeah, I mean, I was pretty... Yeah, I'm like, thank God I don't have to go through that. But the first time I clocked it, I was just like, oh, fuck. Like, how did you realize that this guy is in deep? Because, you know, there are things that you do. Like, when you're with your sneaky link, there's things that you don't do. Some things are very couple couple type of things to mm. do, you know? See, the thing is, we're already friends, right? Yeah. And we already hang out. As friends. So it, 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 I think the lines were blurred at some point where we're hanging out as friends, yeah. but it's looking more like we're a couple. Couple, yeah. Yeah, because we're also cute. Because like that is very, very small. small. Yeah. But I clocked, the first time I clocked it, we we're having a conversation and he had, um, so there's another person I was seeing. <clears throat> and he came to my house and, and like he was, like the whole squad was there, blah, blah, we're having a good time. And I gave him a kiss. Mm-hmm. Like I made out with him in front of him and he was not happy about that shit. He was just like, why would you do that in front of my face? Blah, blah. I'm just like, whoa. But we're not together. Yeah. So I was just like, this right here is the Red feelings flag. being. But then now that made me open myself up to, you know, catching feelings as well. I was just like, Ugh. if he's caught a feeling. Y'all were both in your Delulu's Delulu. Delulu. So I was like, if he's caught a feeling. <sighs> Might Maybe as well, I can catch one. Might as well just catch, I know. I was like, might as well just catch one too. But I don't. I don't think it was necessarily catching a feeling, but more like exploring the catching the of idea, the, the idea of catching a feeling. Don't. But yeah, I f- now that that yeah. I have feelings about, like you know, I that I I I feel you're a bit like because you actually <laughs> thought and considered that you might open yourself up to no, this. No, not really. Uh huh. Well, I don't know, but no. Yeah, you. But how the fuck is my sneaky link breaking up with me? Me. (laughs) That's the funny shit. (sighs) Anyway, it's okay. You'll fall in love with me if you're a sneaky link. (laughs) Well, yeah. (laughs) You'll fall in love with me. Don't fall in love with me. Exactly. And that should be on a t-shirt now. If you're a sneaky link, (laughs) do not fall fall in love with me. The most fucked up part is when we started. I told him, Mm. "Don't fall. Make sure you don't fall in love with me." Yeah. And he said, "Let's see who's gonna fall in love first. And I said, "Boy, bet, boy, (laughs) that's what we're doing. Bet, let's go." (laughs) Anyway. Damn, <clears throat> how's on, your week been? Because my week's been super trash. I can just rant about it, can I? Yeah. Go ahead. So basically, I had exams, and I don't think I've had exams that are this shitty. My friend, both the papers. Really? There's a quite. I don't know a question in each paper, so that's twenty marks off the board. Me, I'm like, bro, nikipita is semester ni mungu tu. Ni mungu. Ni mungu, cause like, what in the fuck? You know, sometimes I sit down and regret. I'm like, why are you in school? <laughs> Damn, it was that bad? It was bad. It was nasty. Then my mom's visiting. Oh, yeah. Well, so it's been tough. Yeah. And then, oh, by the way, I want to give a shout out. You know, this is so weird. So, you know, the function you saw me getting ready for yeah. on Instagram. So it's Navratri and it's a predominantly Hindu festival. I just go because, I mean, I like it. It's yeah. usually nice to see them doing their traditional dance. And because of work, I have to go. Mm. But I was so surprised. Um. As I was leaving the venue on Monday, by the way, as a Jalaram, and if you're the babe watching this, 
shout out. Oh, you made friends. Now, there were two Indian babes that I did not expect would watch the podcast. Stop. Like for real. Like, you know, they're a bit like on the tradition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously they're, they're hip, they're young, but they're also very cultured, you know, deep, deep culture, yeah. not like me. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was leaving and they go like, Nimrod, do you know we love your podcast? We watch your podcast and you don't know how many Indians actually fuck with your oh. podcast. So I'm like, thank oh you. Oh my gosh. Shout out, shout I out. love that you're giving us a different demographic. Right? It's Because so I didn't expect it because I honestly know that some Indians will fuck around with the pod because of my loud mouth. Yeah. But Oh, Kumbay, you do. You're sharing the tea and yeah, you're making, you're, you're, you're serving it piping hot, <laughs> you know. I'm giving like, them yeah. tea. Yeah, like what is she going to talk about today? Speaking of, I was at another event mm-hmm. and hey, this week has been full of events. Yeah. And then I realized how people, like, okay, you are in radio, right? Yeah. And you know, you have competitors in the field. And when you both are at the same event, how did you usually interact with the other presenters who are your competitors? I mean, make them your friend, bro. <laughs> right? <laughs> They're going to share the secrets and, right? you know, might as like, well utilize them. <laughs> like that relationship between those, the, their presenters. This is besides management. Yeah. Just you two. But I don't feel like I necessarily looked at them as competitors. Mm-hmm. I looked at them more like um, colleagues. colleagues yeah. or individuals in the same space where we can like interact with each other and share different um, ideas with Talk each other. To the camera because there's some people who need to listen to this. Because that's not how they look at it. Yeah. No, in gen- generally in every field, I yeah. feel like if you start comparing yourself with another individual who does the same, com- competition is great. Mm. I'll tell you that because when I'm working my ass off, I know I'm, I'm, I'm you like, need to be the best. I'm going to be the fucking best. Yeah. And that's about is a period, but honey. it's you doing your personal very best. Yeah, but yeah. if I meet up with you, like I'm not gonna be like, oh, she's my competitor. Blah, mm. blah, I'm, not, I'm gonna be catty towards you. If anything, we could be best friends, honey. And even <laughs> if corporate is pushing that agenda to you down to you, would you still can like, um, let's say for example, you are still at where we used to work. Yeah, and they tell you that Ashley, because you work for us, we do not want to see you interacting with presenters from the competitor brand. <laughs> As <laughs> and that's on period because let me tell you our station just has one competitor and we don't even count them as competitors because they're rookies in fact Ooh. i heard something of theirs is on sale i know who you're talking about you know what i'm talking about yes. yeah correct so they those guys on their end trained or rather i don't know me that's why i wonder when you don't have a brain of your own oh. anyway they kept telling their presenters that don't interact with presenters from this station because they are competitors really so we and you know that's something that really pisses me off and i keep saying this okay sour the entertainment scene in kenya is large but it's predominantly black because it's a kenyan country yeah, like yeah. what the fuck do you expect right yeah and then us guys our population is so small over here you have two radio stations mm. and you're going at each other and you're trying to divide your two stations among an audience that's already two. It's a fifth Small. size of an audience. True. Like, are you clever? And then that thing is reached a point where a couple of years until today, they decided we are going to, like, if there's an event, a musician is coming and the competitor brand is sponsoring, we're not going to sponsor. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? You can both partner mm. and both, <clears throat> both get a good job and both get money and both win. Now, it's reached a point, those presenters on that end have been conditioned not to speak to us. So it was so weird because that station had partnered for this event. Yeah. It was the UNHCR event. And then when we are right there and sitting, you could see the divide. Because first of all, they didn't expect two people from the competitor station yeah. to pull up. And we got pulled up because we have personal relationships as an individual. Individuals. So we're over there and you can see the hate on the other side. And I'm like, you guys, calm down. The pie is too small for you to be scrambling for it. True. I think it's also a personal decision. That's what I think. So that's what I'm thinking, like to the other side of the spectrum. Yeah. Like, Kwani, Hamna, Kili, because I, I was friends with one of their ex presenters, and everybody had a problem with that. They go, like, why are you, why are you two talking to each other? We thought you were going to compete because you're the sim- we are similar people. And I'm like, <coughs> no. In fact, me and her met up mm. to show you that we are going to be friends because you don't have to pit us against each other. Yeah. I feel like there's a there's a very there should be a very clear divide between your personal life and your work life. Correct. Cuz I mean, cool when we're working, yeah. we don't have to interact. I mean, you're not interacting in the first place, but yeah. when in my personal life, like 
you you can't tell me who to talk to you can't tell me so that's why i'm saying it's also an individual choice it's also it a personal choice yeah i can't you can't tell me it's a company who do they have a gun to their head telling them don't talk to these guys mm. it's an individual problem b- b- problem yeah if those people really wanted to actually you know interact with you guys or be friends with you guys They've just found one one other reason to hate on people. So hey, I was looking at that thing. I'm like, it's toxic, and you're thinking that you want the Indian entertainment scene to progress, and yet you act like that. I've received <clears throat> so much of that um, kind of response because mm. there's another lady at the same uh, thingy. She's quite older. This is somebody in her forties, and she started back in the day, mm. and she used to write blogs and stuff. I don't, I don't even think her name is known in the in the generic field. Yeah, but anyway, she. She knows who I am and she talks to my sister in, in, in the in the Sikh temple in the community about how about my career. And then she's in the same room at, with me and, and she's, she's giving me a to. stare down from my I have never been stared down like that. I have bitches who hate me. <laughs> I, uh, okay, maybe not imaginary yeah, haters. A, it's a heavy word. <laughs> okay, I, imaginary haters. I'm sounding like a who Kenyan musician haters? right now. Yeah. <laughs> Your haters. I'm sounding like a Kenyan rapper right now. <laughs> but yeah, like I do know there are some people who dislike me, but that dislike I felt from that mama, yeah. I was like, bro, I'm your daughter's age. First of all, you're wearing a Mickey Mouse watch don't at hate. an event. <laughs> Stop hating. No, I'm telling you, don't hate. <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't hate on the haters. Okay, but nah, no. I got to give it back. <laughs> wow. This is my platform for you. Fire with fire. But that, I was going to say mm-hmm. also, um, I personally feel your impact in the in the Indian community yeah. as a presenter, considering like majority of the events that happen, majority of the Indian events, you're emceeing them. Yeah. Um, you're either on the panel, like you, you're doing a lot in the community. In the scene. Maybe, be- yeah. 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 Maybe because I'm not too aware of it, but I see the impact that you have. Yeah. So maybe the rate of growth is what's bothering people. I don't know what um, it is. The, the, the amount of... V- what's the word to use? V- um, Valor? Your, your, your visibility, visibility. Yeah, is, is kind of like a threat maybe or something. Maybe I just see number one. We have our number one influencer. Shout out Shiksha. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah we Shiksha. have our number one influencer. I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure Shiksha goes through basically the same thing. Oh, yeah. Thing. She used to talk to me about it yeah. and it was so upsetting because I remember those times when I joined radio and Shiksha was there and she would literally rant to me in the evening about how guys were throwing hate on her for dancing with black people in her videos. Wow. Yeah. So that's the thing. Also, you guys are not traditional in that sense. Like yeah. you still hold your traditions, yeah. but then you've been you've been able to incorporate um, different aspects from different cultures, um, considering not a lot of Indians, this is how I personally see it. Yeah. It's not a general it's not. Um, the thoughts or whatever mentality. Actually, it is, but... <laughs> This is our pod. Yeah, in fact. <laughs> but a lot of Indians usually just have that. We've talked about this We've before. We've talked about it before. They yeah. have this bubble and that bubble is rarely popped. Like you already know if you walk into a place and they're just Indians, you know you're probably not going to be served well. You know that the people are going to not necessarily be nice to you. But then that those, you know, the nice ones, the accommodating ones who actually want to know about your but culture. But if we flip the role... And mm. let's say we talk about you, for example, you're born and brought up in Nairobi, mm. right? If I'm not wrong. Yeah. Born and brought up in Nairobi. Have you found yourself in that situation where you are in the middle of two sets of community and you don't know, or rather, you know, but you're not too sure where to place yourself? Because I think everyone experiences in different contexts. Like um, maybe in the contextual value of like you went to... Uh, a good school and you have a different kind of a social circle does does that affect you i don't think it's ever affected me i think also because i i i've always i've been fortunate to meet very open-minded individuals yeah who don't necessarily look at your community as a factor yes you know what i mean I understand. like sometimes it will be you know my friends make fun of me like they're just like for mary you're not violent <laughs> you know my tokanieri now stuff like that yeah, yeah how are you mary jokes you, you jo- jokes yeah mm. how you mary when you don't chana like <laughs> jokes like those right but it's never necessarily been a factor where it affects anything in the yeah. relationship at all. Wow. Like at all. And I've never been in a, I don't, I can't think of a situation where I've felt uncomfortable because I'm of not 
who yeah, you because are, of who I am, community, or, or yeah. my com- community in any way. So that's I've been fortunate for that. Mm. Um, but I also I, I assume it's also the people that I hang out with, the people that I meet, the areas that um, I need new friends <laughs> and new people and new social circles. Come to me, baby. I've your friends. <laughs> Come to, oh yeah, you have. They really do. I have actually met your most of your friends. Yeah, yeah I've met much. a lot of your pretty friends. Yeah. I've integrated my friend, my friend your group. Friend group. Nice Actually, thing. you're the only one who's managed to do that. I find that very difficult because all my sets of friends are very different. Mm. Like I'll have the most nerdy friends and then the <laughs> most sport friends and the most Indian friends yeah. and the most black friends. And I'm like, it's how do extremes. you put them together? <laughs> I feel like you can. You I can? feel like my friends are extremes. I'm too scared, man. <laughs> they're extremes as well. Okay, they're extremes of different things. Like yeah. we'll party the fuck out of ourselves and then we're going to go to work the next morning and be very focused. With All our of them. Sh- like we usually say, if you see us at work and you see us at the bash, you'll be like, who are Wait these people? <laughs> Also interact. I feel like for my friends, interacting with new people is a plus for them. Yeah. Like they like talking to new people. I love Ashley's friends. Thank I you. I think the best one's PJ. Oh yeah. Yeah, That's actually PJ. PJ is, PJ is such a great yeah. friend. Yeah. I yeah. love PJ. Um, I had a question for you guys. Um, do you do you feel like separating your friends is something that is prudent? Like, um, mm. the the circle that we have of good company friends and your friends not intertwining all of them do you think it's it's a good thing i personally don't because i've intertwined all my friend friend groups um i feel like the the, they've seen different versions of you Mm. and they'll be able i don't know they understand you in different ways Mm. but at the end of the day if they really know who you are as an individual they will be able to to come together come together and kind of relate and i think i think Separ- like breaking down your friends is a, a very weird thing. Is it? Because imagine, like case in point, we're at a dance hall versus you know um, Afrobeat event, and you want all your <coughs> click friends to come through, right? Mm. Are you gonna put them at different tables? No, you're not. Right? You want to yeah. hang out with all of them. Yeah. So if you divide them, then there won't be that. You you'll <coughs> always be jump hopping from table. Well, I did that the last time, but it's because also that. But was then a also there case. were too many friends of yours there. There to were think about there it. There were too many. Yeah. We could not fit on a table yeah. for sure. But even like Cavalli. <coughs> yeah. Cavalli was lit, guys. Thank you for coming through. I know. I know you had a good time. Also, I was looking sexy as fuck. I really want to see the photo. You're killing me. Oh, shucks. You should Can have you been there. Take a photo? No, I did. Oh, of course. But even Kavali, like all my friends came through and they were different friends from different places. Yeah. And they were able to come, come together. together and mash up. Like there was no clicking. People were just talking to each other but in different, I think from different clicks. It also depends who the person is. Like Ash, I know you in a social circle, in a social setting, you're able to bring people together. Because mm. even in, let's say, our intimate group, you are the one who brings us together. Because even during like, again, like your mom during the Christmas party. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand. You're Mm. like the central point. Mm. Because there are people who are able to bring those people together. Like for me, I don't purposely segregate my groups. Number two, I've never gotten a chance where I need all of them because I don't throw birthday bashes. I'm not a bash thrower. I like to attend bashes. Yeah. You see, you also like hosting to an extent. Yeah, no, no. I just like drinking in my house with my friends. (laughs) At least you're calling your friends home to drink. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. Have they ever the, called you home to drink? No. Because, so I, I also <laughs> understand my friends, right? Yeah. So I'm not going to call you for a bash. Yeah. Like, I'm going to call you for a party. At, like, a like my Yeah, a chill party. Yeah. But if I know we're going all out. Like, hardcore. I wouldn't call yeah, you. Yeah, because I Because I know up. the person you are. Yeah, so yeah. even going out, sometimes I wouldn't call you unless yeah. you ask me. Because I know you don't like going out. All the time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you once understand. in a while, definitely yeah. we'll be like, it's a plan. Yeah. But knowing your friends is also, also important. very important. Exactly. Because you understand what exactly they need. Mm-hmm. So if you have a house plan, you're going to call them. My mom's um, party. Yeah. Of course, I called you because it was going to be chill. It was outdoors. There was a fire pit. You know, I do like home house parties more than exactly. club parties. Yeah. But to come to my house to bash with my... Your friend, I can't keep up. I've said this a million times. Yeah. I can. I think I even sent you a TikTok the other day saying when your friend who likes to drink calls you out and me after one shot, I can't keep up. Not I even that because there's so much that usually happens in different conversations with different people. That yeah. I, so I feel like that will be... I like that will be you because you get my anxiety. I get you, babe. I get you. But yeah, now for me, that's very difficult. And I'm, I always think about it. I'm like, imagine if you threw a birthday bash 
how are you gonna have all your friends in one room <laughs> like for me the social anxiety first of all is killing me because now i'll be so worried about everyone getting along yeah because i also don't want you to come to my bash and then everybody's on their own oh, that's not, it's not a you problem yeah. i think that's one thing you need to realize oh, it's not a me problem no. because i'd really like all of them to just mingle that's, and be friends that's on them yeah it's not your responsibility to make people friends okay <laughs> why am i wrong no it's not okay what what are your thoughts on it um I think my my point of view would be um just having different set of friends for different sets of occasions. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um if at all I'm having a set of friends <clears throat> that are purely professional, I will limit it. I will limit them to professional side yeah. of it. Not intertwining them with my social friends and then mm. they end up being um they end up starting kikikiing or messing around. And then it bro- it blows up the whole camaraderie of the of the whole friendship. Mm. And then it to me that I, I usually have like a clear demarcation. Like mm-hmm. there are some friends that I would actually put in both circles, but there are some friends I only limit them to the to the specific circle. If yeah. it's the social circle, I'll retain you there. If mm. it's the professional circle, I'll retain you there. Okay. okay, makes sense. That makes I agree with that. Sense. It depends on the friends that you have. Yeah. Yeah, like what kind of individuals they are. I like it. I'm wow, down for it. Well, it's going to be different because I'm like, I only have two friend groups right now. Mm. I'd like to have some more. I and only I think have now two friend I have time. Also, yeah, you actually have mm-hmm. just two friend groups. I do. Yeah. Yeah. And then, I mean, they got along very well, so I'm very fine. <laughs> 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 makes it easier for me i guess <laughs> <laughs> it does it really does anyway how long have we been i feel like too long too long too long Babbage. it's a wrap it's a wrap also, remember to wrap it up also <laughs> Sorry, before really you put feel- it in <laughs> keep it wrapped guys we don't want to cook melons i'm also really feeling myself lately you look stunning Thank the you. braids i Thank so you, you do the whip. I think it's because I can whip my hair now. I like I haven't never been able to whip my hair. Pictures coming, but also I got a full body. Like my whole body is waxed, so I'm feeling a little. You're smooth. feeling sexy. Like I'm feeling good. It like, shows. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Love you. Watch us. Subscribe us. Uh, like, watch, share, subscribe, comment. What she said. Like, Bye. share, subscribe, comment.